I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? This is Matt once again. What about to another review? <laughs> this time it's a paid request from Maxwell T, who wanted my thoughts on a thin line between love and hate. Now, the thing with this film, I've seen this film before. I thought I always thought it was okay. Uh, I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. It's kind of a it's kind of hard to even call it a parody of Fatal Attraction. Because it is a comedy, but at the same time, there are moments where it's trying to be a bit serious, dramatic as well. Now, you understand this is a time frame where Martin Lawrence, who I do enjoy, he was very successful with his TV show Martin, which was going on at the time. Because that went on until 1997, and this came out in 96. And this is a year after Bad Boys. So yeah, I think he has a successful TV show, Martin. Successful movie, Bad Boys. Carte Blanche to do whatever he wanted. So it's like, okay, you want to help write and you want to direct a film, you want to star in a film, here you go. And it became a thin line between love and hate. Now, I don't know all the stories. There's stories that apparently he... I don't know, he, in the making of film, he either burned out or freaked out or something happened. I don't know all the details of it. But, you know, the film came out. It did okay business. And since he helped write it and he directed it, might be the only film he's directed, I could, I could see a bit of the ego in this. Because Martin Lawrence is playing a guy who is a playboy. He's conning women left and right and all of these girls want to be with them. He's always dealing with all these girls. And it's one of those things where Martin Lawrence's character is really not the most likable character. So it's hard for me to root for him during this movie. Also, it's one of those movies that kind of shows the ending at the beginning of the film, and then the end, most of the movies all told in flashback. So, I thought that was a weird choice as, uh, as well. But yeah, he's conning these women, like a shy girl, one girl who has kids, he has like four, five, six girlfriends. And you have other characters around him. You have Bobby Brown. Yes. Whitney Houston. That, Yes, that Bobby Brown. He's in the film as one of Martin Lawrence's buddies. Let's see. Regina Teen, who is in Friday, among others. She plays his childhood friend that he had a crush on. And she's come back from the military. And she's actually going out with Miguel Nunez Jr., Joanna Man, he was in Return of Living Dead, he was in Friday, Friday the 13th Part 5. 
Let's see, who else do you have? There's a few other recognizable people. Tracy Morgan, I believe, is in the film as a bartender. I don't even think he has a name. Just a bartender. Because this buddy he knows owns this club. And Martin goes to this club from time to time. And that's what I mean. Like, his character is not the most sympathetic. And I would say the movie seems seldom funny at times. Because it seemed like, okay, it's a comedy. But there's many points where Martin Lawrence wants to show his romantic side. Maybe he thinks as a director he could pull out a little bit of a thriller side. And it seemed like he didn't want to keep a consistent tone. So that's why I mean it felt like there's a little bit of ego play in this. Maybe I'm wrong in that. And then funny enough, this is one lady played by Lynn Whitfield, which she did a really good job, who there's plenty of signs that showcase not the goal with this lady. And these, she even goes, hey, I want nothing to do with you. And you don't know everything about me. But Martin keeps going after her. Because of his ego. Because of the character's ego. He's adamant. Even to the point where they're going horseback riding. One of the few moments that did make me smirk is... If you buck, I'm not you the fuck out. <laughs> he says that to the horse. And she keeps warning him and he keeps being adamant until finally the deed is done. I mean, she even says, it just wouldn't be good if I was hurt. You can't hurt me. And Martin goes along with it. And that's why I mean, Martin Lewis is really unlikable in this. I know that's the point as he says at the end uh, having to go through all this to finally learn how to be a man but I'm almost going to say too little too late I, mean, I don't know I mean I like Warren Lawrence himself so I mean, that's why I don't hate the character but again fairly unlikable for a good chunk of it and get back to the ego like Ty Zeus, Tiny Lister Jr., who's Debo in Friday, he was in The Fifth Element, he was in No Holds Barred as Zeus with Hulk Hogan. This is one where he's drunk in the bar, and Martin Lawrence helps some people beat Tiny Lister Jr. up. And I'm going, even with help, I don't see Martin Lawrence beating up Tiny Lister Jr. And there's no comedy in it. I know he doesn't do it by himself, to be fair. But it's like, you think there'd be some comedy or some levity or some kind of making fun of oneself while he tries to hit Tiny Lister and he hurts his arm or he tries to take him down but he does nothing? No, he's doing perfectly fine. Who'd have thunk it? Oh, because if Martin Lawrence directed it. So it can't look too awful. It can't look too bad. And like I said, does the deed with the girl, Lynn Whitfield. Which, like I said, she did a good job displaying a character that you tell there's something off with her. You tell there's something not quite right. All the lights are not on, so to speak. And I thought she played that off fairly well. And of course, what does Martin do? Rebuffs her later candlelight dinner offer to go with Regina Teen, childhood sweetheart. Hey, I want to. I just want to be with you. He does dump the others. So it seems like he's really wanting to make this work with Regina Teen, but he fucked over the wrong woman. And as he even says, "I'm caught up in a real life fiddle attraction in this motherfucker." Which, that's another line I did like. So, there are moments that I did laugh at. But I don't think it was as consistently funny. Even as, compared to a film like Blue Street or... The Bad Films. Although, when I think about it, the films that Martin Lawrence starred in, that he was the main focus, 
and not with Will Smith or someone else. I mean, compared to a film like Rebound or Black Knight, yeah, this is better. I'll take this over those. Yeah, College Road Trip, which I don't remember anything about. You had Bid Mama's House. I'll take this over Bid Mama's House, any of them. So, because Martin Lawrence still has that energy and vigor. He still had that. You tell that desire to try to make it big. You just kind of see it in people and their early stage of their career. See, other moments that made me laugh. Oh, when he parts, he comes out of the police station and all the wheels are gone. It's like, she broke my shit down from the police station. And he gets in and it's like, what am I doing? I can't fucking drive this motherfucker. <laughs> and then he leaves. Like, that's another moment I did laugh at. The ending seems a bit clunky. Spoiler alert. Because what happens is... The Lynn Whitfield's character has done some crazy stuff. And couldn't help try to burn down this club. So he goes to confront her. He just knocked down, tied up. Some people, including Regina Teen, later on get there. Martin Lawrence pushes Regina Teen and Lynn Whitfield into the pool. He's there in the pool. Then almost immediately it cuts to the hospital. Then it cuts to Lynn Whitfield's mud shot with Martin doing some narrating. Then it cuts to Lynn Whitfield kind of turning to the camera and looking over here while some credits appear as if it was the ending of a TV show. You know how many TV shows you have like a person look in and then you'll have the credits start like this. Oh, this represents credits. Like credits appear. That's what it seemed like. I'm like... Is this the end of an episode or it felt like was this how it originally was going to end? Was there something more to it? It just seemed a bit abrupt and clunky. Was there stuff edited out? Was there an alternate ending? It seemed like something that should be. I don't know why you need to show the ending and the flashback and then really not much after other than Brief scene in the hospital, Lynn Whitfield's butt shot, and then a pic of Lynn Whitfield kind of looking off camera. And Marlon Lawrence going, when she gets out, I hope she'll be okay. What the fuck he was saying. So I'm like, there's something just off about this ending. I can't put it into better words. Smarter person can, but I can't. It is something, something weird about it. So, a thin line between love and hate is an interesting idea when we this was the era of Pacific Heights, Unlawful Entry, Hand the Ross the Cradle, of course before in the 80s Fatal Attraction. I could do a little bit more of a comedy version of that. Although I thought So I Married an Axe Murderer with Mike Myers, I think that's a bit of a funnier movie compared to this. I would say So I Married an Axe Murderer is a bit more consistent in its tone. But I still like Martin Lawrence. I still like his vigorous energy in the film. I mean, it doesn't really come off as that likable of a character in the movie. A great idea that's the point of the arc, but. Oh, that, that art didn't seem as satisfying as maybe it could have. Maybe Martin Lawrence shouldn't have directed the film. Maybe he should have gotten someone else to direct it. I think Martin is a fan of the movie because there was a podcast he did a few years ago where he talked about how he wants to make a sequel to this. I don't see a lot of people itching for a sequel to this. Because really, this is a film no one talks about, like at all. 
I don't even know if it even has a Blu-ray or anything. I I like Lynn Whitfield's performance. I bought her as this girl who again, if you hurt her, she will go nuts on your ass. I bought her. There were a couple of moments that made me chuckle. The supporting cast did fine. Uh, Roger Mosley from Men and P.I. He's a guy who's a friend of Martin Lawrence. He owns a club. I believe uh, Della Reese plays his mom. The, the lady from Touch by an Angel. She does a good job. As does Regina Teen. Well, she played the girlfriend a lot because she played the girlfriend of Ice Cube and Friday. She played the girlfriend, I want to say, of Eddie Murphy and Daddy Date here. I know she was in Enemy of the State with Will Smith. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. It's like, man, all she had to do was play a girlfriend to Kevin Hart or Chris Rock. But despite his flaws, I do think he's a time waster, but it's not one of my favorite Martin Lawrence films. But like I said, I would rather watch it than Rebound or Black Knight or something. But eh, it is what it is. Maybe Martin Lawrence shouldn't have directed the film. Maybe he should have just stuck to starring in it. Or maybe a few more passes in the script would have helped too. I don't know. But that's just my opinion. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.